and New England's Berkshire Mountains are in full glory, a place where the past is revered and time moves slowly and gently. In the northwest corner of Massachusetts, the campus of Williams College, a serene and normally studious place where smart kids congregate for an elite and expensive education. But make no mistake, there's also a passion for sports in their purest form. Williams is a power in D3. Today, this typically quiet campus is vibrating with a frenzy for football. The Williams Eves collide with their ancient arch enemies, the Amherst Lord Jeffs. The finale for both sides. Meanwhile, today, the world of VCS big boys races for potential stunners. We'll debate who is the most worthy as controversy looms. Has Darren McFadden run to the front of the Heisman pack as he readies for Rocky Top? D-Mac visits with Desmond Howard. Plus, a farewell visit to the old horseshoe where it all happened. The magic, the memories of the Orange Bowl. As Miami says goodbye today. We say hello from Weston Field in Williamstown, Massachusetts. Capacity unknown. It is SRO today as College Game Day salutes the biggest little rivalry in college football. Well, we're coming to your city. Well, we are as skilled as the Gators. The Eves of Williams and the Lord Jeffs of Amherst aren't a lot of things that the Giants of college football are, but they are many things that the Giants aren't. They are student athletes, not athlete students. They don't leave school early to enter the NFL draft. They play eight games each fall, not 13 or 14. And today, win or lose, the seniors will say farewell to football. Don't got no more after this one, let's go. They're playing strictly for the love of the game and really the appreciation of their other teammates. I mean, that's, that's what motivates them to want to do well. We just want to play football. We're not here to, to play on Sundays. We're here to play hard while we can. Routine. Not just to play hard, though, but to win, especially today. The outcome of the Williams Amherst game may mean nothing to the millions who follow the BCS standings, but it means everything to the young men who play the game. If we beat Williams, that kind of makes our whole season. You can go 1 7, but if you beat Williams, you've had a good year. If you go 7 1 to lose to Williams, just an average year. It's like two brothers going at each other. You know, there's mutual respect. Um, they're both looking to achieve the same goal. They both understand where the others come from. For the seniors, the game is a bittersweet valedictory, the finite end of their football playing lives. You never want to end your career, but if you're going to end it, you, you want to end it against, you know, somebody you respect playing against and your biggest rival. People come back 40, 50, 60 years later, and that's the one game that they remember. There could have been a lot of amazing games that have happened over their career. But the one game that they're going to talk about is that game, the Williams game, the last Williams game that they had. I'm only 21, but I'd say Saturday is probably going to be one of the most important days of my life. It's just the culmination of some Saturday is probably going to be one of the most important days of my life. It's just the culmination of something that I feel like I've worked hard for and the rest of my team has worked hard for, not just this season or last season, but every season they've played football because none of us are ever going to get to play again. You could almost hear in his voice the emotion, could you? It means a lot. And you've had a self-identity as a football player since you're six or seven years old. These guys started playing football the same time the guys at Ohio State and Texas and USC yeah. played, and they feel like they're football players. And after today, it's going to all be gone. I, uh, you know, imagine what you guys were feeling. You know, the, the last time you played a football game, the last time you put the pads up for the maize and blue. Uh, imagine <laughs> it's Ohio State in the regular season, right? Exactly. So it was kind of bittersweet. But just like these guys, my last game was against my rivals, and their last game was against their rivals. But what you have to do is suppress the emotion because it's already at, at, a, at, a, at a heightened level because you're playing your, your biggest rivals. But you need to go out there and execute. You need to focus. But when the emotion really comes into play is at the end of the game, especially in a victory. If the kids from Williams College win this game, they have to understand this will be the last time they will don those jerseys, the last time they would get to walk down Spring Street and get buzz cuts. And that's what the emotion was like for me when I was in the locker room. It, the, the, the tears start to come out your, out your eyes and the hugs got a little tired 
because this was the last time you would go down that huddle, jump up there and touch that banner, and wear the yeah. maize and blue in the big house. So you understand what I'm talking yeah, about, Yeah, there's, there's for me, same thing. Rivalry yeah. game, the last game, Ohio State, Michigan. My last game happened to be in the horseshoe, and they announced the seniors. You come through the tunnel, oh. tears are coming down your face. They play Carmen, Ohio. For me, personally, living a, a lifelong dream, making it a reality. But Desmond touched on some things. You've been playing football your whole life. You've been sweating and suffering and sacrificing with the guys in this locker room. And all of a sudden, it's the last time you put on that jersey. It's very, very emotional. You try to keep things in perspective. And Lee, throughout yeah. the week, you relive oh, different man. thoughts and different moments. And you know that you're never going to get that chance again to dress with your guys. This seems like to me senior citizen weeks, but let me tell you about my last game. 51 years ago, I played in the blue-gray all-star game in Montgomery, Alabama. I was the South quarterback. A coaching staff had three Hall of Famers. Bear Bryant, Texas A&M, Shug Jordan, Auburn, Jim Tatum, Maryland. And I had the distinction. I made history that day. I was the first Southern quarterback ever to get shut out in that game. We lost 14-0 to Len Dawson. But what did they expect? I was on my honeymoon. I was on my honeymoon. Oh, really? I was, I was Say nothing about football. About the game. Oh, you left your legs somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I was on my honeymoon. And, and, and of course, then you turned down the NFL because you were the second to last player drafted, right? That, that year, I don't want to say anything, but That's Chicago Cardinals. 340th player. <laughs> <laughs> so you pass in the NFL money and just yeah. left it right there. I feel like these guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, these guys will not be thinking about the honeymoon or anything else. They'll focus solely on football and beating their arch rivals. You talk about the emotion right. of a pregame speech. These guys are going to convene in a house behind us. We're going to give you a taste of the pregame speech in a place they call the P House. Kickoff less than 30 minutes away. Amherst against the Eves of Williams. Now, who will be the head gear selection on the 150th regular season college game day roadshow? Here comes the anvil case. There's the security detail. There's the P House behind us right there. <laughs> By the way, we're going to bring that up on stage. We're going to make the selection. And then we're counting down. They kick.